Fair, the general manager of Missoula Community Access TV. And I'm Kim Anderser, Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done this in a month. I'm the director of programs and grants for Humanities Montana and a board member on MCAT. So we want to welcome you to our second show of Missoula Live. I had a terrible cold for what would have been the second show, and you had a terrible grant to write. I mean, I'm yeah. sure it's great. Yeah, uh, I mean, so far, January's a disaster. Yeah, so thanks to Scott. Scott did interview a few people that day. It was oh, a nasty good. day. Yeah. There's something like sleety and so on. So we do have a lineup of guests for you today, and I have a few things to say about MCAT, and here they are. We are still doing our Saturday animation drop-in for kids. This is from 1 to 5 p.m., and the kids can be between 9 and 13 generally. There can be exceptions and so on. There's a small fee for the four hours. It's $10. And we always say, you can't get a babysitter. That's Cheaper the best than that. deal in town. Right? And the kids are learning some pretty interesting techno things. And I think I'll say it now because everyone's going to know about it sooner or later. Do it. I bought a, um, a virtual reality goggle thing. You're kidding. No, I and bought you didn't show the me vibe. When I in the well, door? it doesn't work. Oh, no. So <laughs> the issue is we need like a supercomputer to make this thing work. Technology. Right. So all the parts are being ordered, and our boy Wonder IT guy Justin is going to put it together when he gets back from his grandma's house <laughs> at the end of the month. So anyway, point being that if you um, come to MCAT in February, there will be a virtual reality wow. break from. Stop animation. Oh my God. I know, so it's going to be pretty cool. You're going to be swamped. you hear more about it later. Also, for um, kids of all ages, MCAT's general tour and training, it's held the second Wednesday of every month. So next month in February, it will be on the 8th, a Wednesday at 530. No need to register, though you can call us, 542-6228, if you want to make sure the way that we're expecting you. And that's all I've got. Well, I don't have a ton of news from Humanities Montana, except that um, at the end of this week, on January 26th, we will be in Helena celebrating oh, nice. the Governor's Humanities Awards, which we give in conjunction with the Governor's Office. Great. And uh, we're honoring six great Montanans, including two Missoulians, Hal and Sheila Stern. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And Sheila Stern, people will remember her as the interim president of the University yes, of Montana. Yes, and I remember Hal Stearns because he was my teacher History? in junior year yeah. of high school. Yes. So <laughs> that's going back. So there are still tickets available. You can see on our website uh, how to get them and read information about the honorees and uh, the organization. The only other thing that looming ahead in the future is an April 20th grants deadline. So if you have a humanities project uh, that's open to the public and is has something to do with humanities disciplines like history, literature, jurisprudence, environmental studies, philosophy, uh, give me a call. The number's on the website and we can chat about it and uh, see if it's something that might be appropriate for our funding. That's Excellent. It. Well, that sounds really great. I, I love those awards, you know, that people from all over the state It's get really recognized. nice. It's really nice. You know, mm. there's heroes in all walks of life, and these are people who are using their brains to uh, make Montana better. There you go. Great segue to our guest. Yeah, yeah. speaking of that. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, how's it yeah. going? So here's Jesse and Jamar. They are representing Empower Montana. And and you folks at home might remember them as belonging to National Coalition Building Institute and mm -hmm. NCBI. And then was it this fall yep. that you guys made the move to be your own right here in Montana institution? Yeah, so uh, um, we're no longer NCBI Missoula, now we're in Power Montana. And I think we're all still, well, Jamar's new since uh, then, so it's easy for him. But those of us who have been around for a while, we're still tripping over it every once in a while. But it rolls, in Power Montana, it rolls off the tongue pretty easily. Yeah, so. You get used good. to it. And I want to thank you, because every time I came across your name, I would have to do the little mental NCB. What is that? Okay, what is that again? So yeah. thank you. When I'm in charge of communications <laughs> there, it's much easier for me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, um, there are things coming up with Empower Montana. What caught my eye, I think it, maybe I saw on Facebook, you know, that you guys were going to be having workshops coming up, and one of them was titled Building Skills for an Inclusive Community. And I thought, yeah. oh, 
I should contact them and see if they want to talk about that. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that happened, you know, there's a lot of anxiety in the, in the community right now post, uh, given the elect election that happened, the mm -hmm. campaign we just got done with, and, uh, you know, in the way that the campaign happened, you know, there's just been this ugliness in American culture that's happened for a while, and, and, I, and we've seen, I think, a permissiveness around uh, acts of hate that have just become much more prevalent. It's been hit in the media a lot, a lot of what's going on up at Whitefish. We saw it before the election, and it's things that happened in Polson. And, uh, uh, and we've been getting contacted a lot by people saying, hey, can you bring your uh, trainings, help us do better skill building around how do we make a community that's safer for all people that, that interrupts violence and prejudice when we see it. And so we decided to work with a bunch of community organizations across the state to put on a, a building uh, communities, uh, 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 inclusive communities training series. There's five confirmed so far. Uh, we'll be having one here in Missoula on February 12th. Uh, we'll be having one in uh, Helena and uh, Whitefish. Uh, they've committed to doing them. We're just working on the details mm -hmm. of when and where. Uh, and then there'll be um, a training in Bozeman on the uh, um, uh, 25th of February and a training in Billings on the 25th of March. Wow. And so uh, there'll be three hour trainings. Uh, there's a small fee that shouldn't be a barrier to come. Uh, more of a suggested donation, uh, sliding scale $15 to $30 to participate. Uh, the one here in Missoula will be over at Har Shalom on the 12th, as I said. And our hope is really to help give people skills to interrupt those uh, um, uh, acts of prejudice and, and, and the violence that they're seeing in the community and, and feel more confident in, in, in being able to help set a more inclusive community uh, yeah. across Montana. You know, I hear, I, I mean, I've heard this a lot in the last few months, people who say, just conversationally, um, uh, you know, I was at a party, someone said something that was really offensive and rude, and I didn't know how to react. Right. Yeah, they say that, and then, you know, there's even now a funny word for it, but I can't think of it, of what <laughs> you would have said. Right. You um, know, when you, like, sometimes it happens in an argument, but very often it happens in these public places where someone is suddenly, you know, being whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, racist, homophobic, um, misogynistic, and then everything freezes because nobody knows what to do with it. Right. It's almost like somebody farted during <laughs> dinner. They don't know anyone yeah. very well, and they're just like, so well, well, anyway, you know, and then you just go, but it's different. So will different. this sort of training give people Absolutely, that's exactly, to that? that's exactly. So what we start with is helping people examine it, examine their frames of reference. So what's the lenses that we uh, perceive mm -hmm. the world through based on our identities and our experiences? Then we break down how racism or oppression or uh, homophobia or, or those things happen through this, talking about the cycle of oppression. And then we talk about specific skills people can utilize, those communication skills that we all need to say, hey, that's not appropriate. Uh, this mm -hmm. impacts me in this way. I would like you to stop that behavior. Or those skills about how to engage someone in that deeper conversation about right. why this is a problem, um, how we can make our community a better place um, so that we can take someone, give people the skills to shift someone from a place that of believing one thing and hopefully get them uh, thinking more about how uh, um, their behavior impacts people around them. Um, and that's kind of the, it's, it's one of the root trainings that we do as an organization. And we feel like it's a service that we can bring out to the community of Montana to help in this particular time that's that few people are really feeling how do I do this on a day-to-day -day basis you right. know that's I think the question I know I've been asking myself and I'm and I hear a lot of people are asking that uh, as well my world's kind of insular so it's always you know like I always have to be somewhere outside my routine mm -hmm. to hear the racist misogynistic homophobic thing yeah. and so we actually have another thing going on for people that want to go a little bit deeper um, uh, Starting February 15th, we'll be doing our True Colors training series. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jamara, if you've got anything you want to say about that in terms of what we're trying to do with the True Colors sure. program? Sure, yes, yeah, so our, um, our True Colors uh, series starts uh, on February 15th, and it's a five-week series. And um, what it is is it's a two-track uh, workshop series. Uh, we have one track for people of color, and we have another one for uh, those who identify as white allies. And the reason that we have two separate tracks is because while there are a vast number of experiences and similarities, um, 
race and ethnicity do play a large part of, of the way that people perceive the world. Um, and they often are like targeted um, because of their race or ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And so the, the two tracks are really designed to help kind of tailor make or, or customize um, to, to experiences for, for both people of color uh, as, well, as well as white allies. And um, really it's just, again, it's just, uh, it's another, it's for those people that have kind of like you said, that you've experienced, that you have this sort of like insular sort of experience. You're kind of used to being around um, people who have similar thoughts or at least like yeah. somewhat similar ideologies. Mm -hmm. um, but then sometimes when you're taken out of those experiences, when you're taken out of like your little your little routine um, and jump back into a place where there's uh, a lot more people, um, sometimes these things happen. And it's it's to it's to equip people with skills and help empower people um, with those like freeze frame moments. Those like oh, what do I do? Someone just said something. Uh, someone made a comment that doesn't sit right with me, but mm -hmm. how, do, how do I engage? And right. so these series, uh, so the, the True Colors Workshop series is really just designed to, to help equip people with skills because there's no one recipe for it um, because everyone, again, is so unique. But it's, it's our hope that through these skills and through the workshops, you'll be able to develop uh, your own flair, your own like sort of like tactics for, yeah. uh, for encountering those. Because like anything, else I mean the more you do the more the more you interact on these issues the more comfortable you become and the more skilled you become and the more natural it feels to you I think um, mm -hmm. and and for a lot of us because we live in such an homogenous community yeah. We don't well, we have those opportunities so. we very often. We make it so. Yeah. You know, we're like, right. I know so-and-so, know so-and-so. Right. So to get a big at in our circle, it's really hard, but then it can often happen like in the line to the movie theater right. or the concert mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. wherever there does seem to be like mm -hmm. the larger life or something. Well, right, and, and even I think that there's situations in our daily lives with people who are trying really hard to not be bigots and yeah. to not to, um, uh, be racist and stuff that we just make mistakes or we're not thinking about something. You know, racism, privilege, those concepts, uh, they're so embedded in our American right. culture. It's hard to see sometimes, and it's hard to see when we're participate, participating in them. And having places like the True Colors training or the Building Inclusive Communities trainings to think about those things and to, to work on the skills uh, to both just recognize it in ourselves and then how do we adjust it with other people is really important in terms of, of, of the skill building we want to try to do. And it's a core to the mission of what Empower Montana is trying to do across sure, the state. Yeah. I mean, oh, I was oh, going to ask just if you'd recommend it for shy people. Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, something like shy people, they're most less likely to say well, that was offensive. And then the thing, oh, well, what is it like? Are they going to do role playing? Is somebody going to make me pretend to be, you know? An yeah, actor? and I'm very, I'm a, people don't believe it, but I'm very much a shy introvert. I just can play an extrovert mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, me too. Though and, I feel, I'm an ambivert. Right, there you go. <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. And it is. I think it's, uh, we try to do things the way we do our trainings is um, to mix up the ways that people interact with the content and and you know the people that are extroverts that want to act out and do things there's a space for them there's also the more quiet small group conversation spaces for the people that are a little bit more sitting back and want to have that more intimate conversation and and we try to mix all that up with the trainings that we're doing yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. people that tend to be more introverted people that tend to be you know less uh, active uh, again, that's part of the skill development. Um, where do you feel comfortable, and how do you feel comfortable in engaging in some of these uh -huh. uh, situations? Um, if you're the type of person that wants to like stand up and like talk about stuff, then like awesome, we've definitely got skills to help with that. But if you're a type of person that wants to be a little bit more introspective and, and examine like how does someone else's behavior and how does someone else's comments affect you, um, and you want to be able to to sit with that and process that, we definitely have skills available um, and resources available f uh, to help you with that as well because again it's it's being able to to help create a space to where you as an individual feel empowered to to stand up for for what you believe in and be able to navigate through uh through some of these channels so the two color workshops are a series of five yep. three yep. hour sessions when are they happening they begin on, they are every Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, starting on February 15th, and math is very hard for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go to, uh, February, I'm, the, I'm the one with the notes, I'm pointing here to Jamar, I'm like trying to stay direct to him here, but it is bad handwriting here, so him trying to read my handwriting is 
you know, really <laughs> terrible. It's March 15th, I'm sorry, February 15th to March 15th, every, every Wednesday. Wednesday. And it's actually six to eight, so it's the, the each session's two hours. Two hours, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah that's involvement, yeah. though. Yeah, that's yeah, and it's really a deeper involved. dive. Is that 30 bucks? I mean, uh, up, that yeah. one, I... We have a sliding, we have a sliding uh, fee available, yeah. um, and we have a website mm -hmm. on our, on our website, we have uh, what the, the costs are. Yeah, so if, if you visit between it, 25 to, I think, uh, I think 75. Yeah. And when it, where are the True Colors sessions being held? They'll be at the Payne uh, uh, Native American oh, uh, Center. Oh, beautiful that's a great space. Choice. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful space. That's a so, um, yeah. University of Montana, it's 6 p.m. Don't worry about parking. Right. Yeah, it's Because okay the parking then. is okay after <laughs> school day or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, it's just empowermontana.org is our website, and or empowermt.org right. is right. our website. And there's more information there about both these training opportunities uh, for people to participate. And, and we're already getting a, really a lot of interest in all the trainings. Is a lot of people are signing up for uh, um, the one that'll be uh, here in Missoula and and if there's people watching I don't know if this goes beyond Missoula but uh, if there's on the internet, you know, we yeah. put it on mm -hmm. YouTube. so there's communities if there's a community that's interested in partnering with us and they're not on the list already uh, they should give us a ring and say hey we'd like to do this and we'd work something out to uh, try to make it uh, um, to their community because we think this is really important that people get these skills particularly in this time yeah it seems so timely so, after the weekend march and everything people are yeah. saying is it a moment or a movement you right. know right. Like, we need to take those it? next steps i mean yeah. if we want to build the community the the local communities and the glo more global united states communities that we want it's more than just a march the marches are really important but we need to do the hard work day to day in our yeah, communities building day. skills to to address these issues right here and right now now i also hear that um after school programming is going to be kicking off soon yes um our after we do after school programs with uh six of the elementary and middle schools here in town um they begin on february 13th uh -huh. um is when i is when the after school programs kick off and uh, yeah, we are definitely like looking for um, volunteers to help us out with those too. Um, it's a really good opportunity if uh, for folks that are either in high school or in college oh, looking cool. to get some more like developmental credit or even able to uh, have a chance to interact with some really awesome, uh, some really awesome youngsters between the ages of uh, fourth grade all the way up to uh, to eighth. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, we definitely would. And what do you do with them? Um, we do almost like mini series. Of, of the the trainings that we do, we try to we try to help uh, give equip the the young folks with the resources and abilities to have conversations about diversity, um, about having conversations about what does violence look like in their schools, um, what does misogyny look like, what does sexism look like in their schools, and. Um, I started in in September, and I am every day that, that I have an opportunity and the pleasure to work with these youngsters. I'm blown away by not only how much they know, but the depth of their of their understanding because they are extremely sophisticated and very very astute when it comes to their perceptions of, of what's going on in their schools and in their communities. So smart to start. That and young. so we're at uh, um, Lowell Elementary School, Hawthorne Elementary School, and Russell Elementary School, and then we're at all three of the District One middle schools. So that would be uh, Meadow Hill Middle School, um, C.S. Uh, Porter, Porter, Washington. and Washington, Washington. Uh, uh, with uh, um, after school programs in there. The schedules uh, will be up on our website in terms of which is where and when and why and all that. But uh, um, if you've got people out in the community, if they got kids that are in those schools and they think you want them t uh, doing this stuff, they should you know look into when Check we're out there at school. And it's a great leadership development opportunity for young people to to start you know thinking critically about. Uh, how they have a role in, in making our communities a better place. And if I may, just, uh, so we kind of divide our we kind of divide our year into two segments. The first year we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of like teaching about a lot of the isms, violence, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. And then the second part of the year we focus a lot on a community action project that manifests itself in the form of our Diversity Day, which is um, April fifteenth. Yes. Oh yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, and, so like our, yeah. and then our all of our students um, they they work to put on. Uh, a project that they get to present to the greater Missoula community. They've done some amazing things. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we've really recorded impressive. that. I bet yeah. this will be our fifth year or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. Senior Citizen Center last year. Yeah, and it'll probably the, we we love the Senior Citizen Center. It's, it's a, a great, great good space. Fit for us, so yeah. uh, uh, we uh, uh, um, we'll probably be back there again. Well, now just remind us um, one more time: the One Day Missoula workshop is going to be February Sunday, February twelfth, from two to five at Har Shalom. Okay. Registration is available right now up on our website. Um, and you need to register in advance. Uh, yes, we're asking people to register in advance. So we're probably I mean, it's pretty. We're going to probably have to cut it off at uh, a number, certain number, mm -hmm. and and it's and it's filling up. So if people want to participate, I'd recommend getting on there and 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 registering soon because uh, um, there's a lot of interest in it. I'm going to go sign up. Sweet. All right. Looking forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Well, should we let you go? Is there anything you want to add? Well, no, just thank you very much for uh, having us on. This oh, is uh, yeah. great. I always get to, uh, I'm always the one sending other people to come to this yeah. class. <laughs> and so it's fun to finally come out from behind the curtain. Yeah, it's not so bad, right? <laughs> it's just pretty ordinary. Yeah. 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 No, come let us know what's going on whenever great. you got new stuff. Awesome, yeah. awesome, cool. Sure. Thanks again, you guys, and thank good you. luck yeah. with the workshops. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for having us. We shall be right back. Um, who was next? Who came in? Was it? Ter oh, it was Teresa, Teresa and Bill who works at the Pop. So um, we're going to talk about Project Homeless Connect. It's coming up this Friday, um, and Scott was feverishly working on some new public service announcements. So he's going to show you some, okay. and we'll trade out guests. We'll be right back. Missoula Community Access Television works with kids in an active learning environment where they get hands-on experience in video production. MCAT offers weekly Saturday classes that spark creativity in kids from 9 to 13 years of age. Located downtown at 500 North Higgins. MCAT Saturday Drop-Ins. Create your story. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people manipulated our practices, and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. I mean, I was just a kid. And you never knew what mood he was going to be in when he came home. It was brutal. My dad, he would come home, and there's one time where... <laughs> good job, good job, bring it back. Chad wasn't a, a football player, per se. He was just a kid that needed to be a part of something. I don't think he had anyone as a role model or someone showing him what to do. It's okay. You're doing good. You're okay. Coach Marr was the only person I really trusted in this town. You know, he was always there. And I'm so proud of you. You've done well. You've done well.
Oh, okay. okay. We oh, go. we're back. Yay. And thank you, Scott, for putting in the new public service announcements. There was one yeah. about not texting and driving. So. I saw that. It was good. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> thank you for coming. So here's Teresa and Will. Will, you work at the Pavarello. I do. I'm the homeless outreach worker there. Yeah. And Teresa, you work at United Way. Correct. And you're both here to talk about Project Homeless Connect 2017. Yes. Correct. All right. Lay it on us. What is it? Yeah, so this is our 11th annual event, wow. and it's a project of the At-Risk Housing Coalition, and so the coalition is a bunch of service providers, and um, Pavarella is part of it, United Way is part of it, and a lot of different social service agencies, and we just we get together annually and put together this awesome project. And I know about it, but I mean, I don't know everything about it. You know, I, I remember people in the past saying it was designed as a one-stop um, day for people that are uh, either homeless right. or at risk for homelessness right. to come in and get everything from the very practical mm -hmm. um, to the more abstract, like get information about how can I stay in my house, you know, what resources are there mm -hmm. for people who own their own home and they're facing trouble with uh, utility bills, taxes, mm -hmm. yard maintenance, and then for people, you know, that that um, the viewing audience might imagine more as when they say homeless, they conjure up the single male, you know, the yes. backpack yeah. and yeah. a puppy, yeah. and that at this event, that puppy can get a veterinarian looked at, yep. that person could get a haircut, that yes. person could look at new clothes yes. or have winter uh, clothing right things repaired yeah we actually just put together 200 plus goodie bags hygiene supplies right. wow. um, hand warmers so everybody coming will be able to leave with a canvas bag filled of hygiene items and basic need necessities yeah. and how many people in a, a typical one of these events how many people do you serve last year it was 350 people wow and that's individuals that's families veterans so wide right. variety of people this year uh, we have, we're at a brand new location so we're at oh. the county fairgrounds i was going to ask yeah. so are, will buses run out there from the downtown or does it not matter you think the there are two lines that run nearby from the transfer center so mm -hmm. we encourage people to use those mm -hmm. um and i think both of them or at least one of them are on the bolt the 15 minute uh, yeah oh route, sure so. yeah That's how, how do you get the word out to people who would be uh who would benefit from a lot of these services how do you make sure they know about it Sitting next to one of them <laughs> <laughs> We'll with the homeless outreach team through the Pavarello Center. Mm -hmm. So we've been spreading the word for at least a couple months now. It's it's word of mouth throughout the homeless community in general. People who've been here for a while know when it gen when it generally generally tends to take place. And we've been disseminating flyers about to all kinds of providers in town that mm -hmm. tend to uh, serve people who are mm -hmm. homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. And that includes schools, and that includes where else? Where else have we disseminated flyers? Uh, the Open Aid Alliance, yep. uh, youth homes, Salvation Army, library, so, yes, library, yes, library. Yeah. mountain yeah. line. Yep. And in terms of that, you know, the, the people that are in a danger of homelessness, you know, they, they wouldn't fit the bill, the stereotypical bill of the mm -hmm. person on the street. They could mm -hmm. be in an apartment with a cable subscription watching this show right now. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And, and could you address some of the things, you know, that someone who is in their own living space, but, you know, has some sort of food insecurity, whatever it is. Yes. Like, like, what would they gain from going there? Well, the Missoula Food Bank will be there, handing out um, pantry items. Um, we, so we, you mentioned the haircuts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if someone's living on a fixed income, a haircut might not be an expense that they can pay for. And so it's really Absolutely. neat to see the transformation of people coming and getting a haircut. That's right. usually one of the top um, areas that people Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um, medical, dental, vision, they're all... Identification. Identification. Oh, yeah. of course. You find a lot of people who even have their own home don't have an ID because they just don't have the money to right. spend $16 to go, exactly. or the time even, if they're working, to go down to the DMV and get it replaced. And so we're covering that cost at the event. Oh, wow, my gosh. Oh, that's really something. You know, every year I think this has got to be one of the most intensive organizing events of the year just in terms yes. of how you coordinate all these yes. providers yes. how long does it take you to kind of get prepare and well I started um, my position <laughs> in October so I'm um, already learning that I need to start a little bit earlier yeah um, sure and you know we have a new location we have a lot of right. firsts this year new because you we used to be at the Methodist Church United yes. Methodist yeah. across yeah. from the uh -huh. library uh -huh. yes 
So new location. Um, in previous years, when guests have come in, they've had to be matched to a volunteer. That is now optional. Oh, um, oh okay. Yeah, and so we, we're kind of concerned that perhaps some people just wanted to come in, get their clothing, get their hair cut, and jet out. And we want to accommodate those folks that maybe didn't want to come before because they would have to be matched with someone. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping we might see um, you know, some new faces this year. Yeah, I can imagine some people who struggle with social interaction mm -hmm. and stuff being put off by that. So yeah. that's a smart idea. We're also um, pre-registering. We're going to try that this year. Oh. So if anyone that's staying at a shelter, um, whether that's a family shelter, the Pavarello Center, um, we are going to do a pre-registration process so the day of we can reduce any kind of lines or bottlenecks for people getting into the event as well. Is so. the space bigger at the fairgrounds? Pros and cons. You know, oh, I think okay. we're going to find that out. We're using five heated buildings at wow. uh, six, five, six, yeah. six heated hmm. buildings. Yes. We're a little bit more spread out, so we hope yeah. that might um, help to reduce congestion. Right. In, in the yeah. church, there was um, it was a very compact, so yes. that was very nice, but it did increase, like I think, walking time to yeah. other places, uh -huh. and more kind of log jams and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah. Right. And to accommodate mobility, um, the fairgrounds are going to let us use one of their, um, not a go-kart, I was going to say go-kart. Um, like a golf, golf cart? Yes. Yeah. yeah. To kind of shuttle people to and from if, if it's difficult to walk um, long distances. So we're going to oh, have that's really some good lessons too. learned, but we're going to yeah. do our best. Yeah. But and another nice new partnership. Absolutely. With, with the yeah, I hope they didn't charge them. They yeah. just came out like with the new, their new rates, you know, to use those buildings. Oh. Yeah. Europe. And they're marketing them, and yeah, we've got it on the bulletin board out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Are there? Do a lot of? Do you see a lot of families taking part in this event? Yes, absolutely. And I think. Do you want to comment on that at all? The families. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that's the other piece. Um, you know, having a flat. I know at the church they had to go downstairs. There were a lot of different hall hallways. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that having it at the fairgrounds, strollers can fit a little bit better. The accessibility will have mm -hmm. increased. Um, we don't have child care this year, so that's one of the areas that we would love to do next year. Um, so we recognize that. But we will have Imagination Library um, oh. giving out free books through United Way. Right. Oh, nice. Um, we are going to be giving out diapers. And so we are making sure to address the needs of families as well. So. Yeah, because I always, you know, think of that people do have that stereotype. Yes. And I mean, yeah. I guess and in a way it's comforting you know like I have just a few friends that are very much like you could tell them a tragedy and what they're gonna say is whose fault is that yeah because what they want is this locus of control mm -hmm. to be everybody so everyone on the street is there because they want to be they made a mistake yeah. or they made a mistake yeah maybe a mistake but but almost in a way the most uh, benign image of the homeless is that single guy yeah. you know that just jimmy cracked corn and he doesn't care and yeah. he wants to be there and unfortunately life is not as neat yeah. in serving tragedy yeah. as, as yeah. that image that there are families that that mm -hmm. you know we could have another conversation about the working poor in town mm -hmm. that that seem invisible because they try to stay away from social services or you know and, doubling up right mm -hmm. yeah. and all that sort of stuff and I do, I do just want to emphasize what you brought up, and I think I understood correctly that mm -hmm. this—you don't have to be homeless no. to take mm, advantage right. of this. Nope. nope. So, so even the working poor, you know, right. so people living yeah. on the edge, you know, that are you know scraping together, you know, their change just to pay rent, you know. So we want mm. to be able to help them kind of get up too. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the idea of the bags too. I mean, something that touches my heart about the event is that it takes time to recognize the people that aren't often recognized, that they are involved in a heroic struggle, you yeah. know, just as the the bank investor is, or just uh -huh. as the, mm -hmm. the sports celebrity is, you know, like when celebrities go to an event, they all get the... Yes, the good, yeah. yes, yeah. Swag. So I like yeah. that, the swag, swag. bag, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, That's also another new thing that we're doing. This yeah. Year. That's cool, that's yeah. Because some people say that, you know, like travel to other countries, they say, well, the difference is that, um, in the United States, it's it's not just a tragedy to be poor, but it's also criminal. Yeah. You know, that there's yeah. this sense of failure and there's yeah. this sense of like, what in the world is wrong with you that, that has a, a deep psychological burden on the people. Yes. On yeah. top of the deprivation is the thing, oh, failure or all yeah. this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas in, in countries more used to disaster <laughs> chaos is just one other thing that, that you're it could poor. happen to anyone. Then that it could happen to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, 
for the people who might be watching who are not in any of those circumstances, mm -hmm. are you still in need of donations, volunteers? Yes. Absolutely. This yes. has to be an immense effort, both financially and people-wise. Yes. I it's think quite the effort. putting together the goodie bags, <laughs> we realize we need more toiletries. Okay. Yeah. Toiletries. So shampoo. We actually ran out of toothpaste. So we could use some more toothpaste. So how can people help? What can um, they do? They can drop it off at the YWCA. Okay. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay. Right. They're doing a toiletries drive. I have a flyer if you guys need Yeah, that. no, maybe <laughs> so. I'll put it on the bulletin board. And that is the YW on Broadway. Correct. Not the YM. On uh, right. Russell. Right. YWCA, right. right across from the pop. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And is yeah. all the information on the website in terms of? On the Facebook page. Yeah, oh, Scott the, put yeah. it up, I think. There yes, it is, there the we Facebook saw it. page. Okay, good. Yes. And I think for folks at home, if you want to help, put in the year 2017, because there's some other pages of other years some, that I encountered right. this afternoon. Oh, that's good to know. Nothing ever dies. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, on Facebook. <laughs> it's, it's all, yeah. I don't know how to delete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. so he's showing it. Well, well, good. I don't know, he's pointing us out. Oh, Bob's still there. Okay, so I guess we should move <laughs> along. I don't know what that means. It's like Bob wants well, to get on. this is a, an annual event that's really an astonishing feat and yes, still needed desperately in our community. So thanks again yeah, for doing thank it. thank you. And, Appreciate it. Uh, remember, it's the fairgrounds this year. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. On this coming Friday, if you're watching the show, on Monday or Tuesday or when, because it shows 27th. every day. January 27th. 27th. Yes. And then after that, you missed it, so get ready for the text. Yeah, you got a lot of time to prepare for the next yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you guys yeah, so much for coming and talking. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, Scott's going to show you one of his brand new spanking PSAs. We'll get Bob Giordano out here to talk about free cycles right after this. Yay. Your local library, igniting the passion for reading. How would you like to have an endless supply of books, movies, music, audiobooks, and even ebooks whenever you want? Your library card can do all that and it doesn't cost a thing. You can pick up a library card anytime the library is open, free of charge to residents. All you need is a picture ID with your current address. The library will then verify your address and once they have, your library card will be good for life. Library card holders may borrow several items to enjoy all at once. Be sure to check the return dates as they may vary depending on what items you check out. It's so easy to get access to all the library has to offer. And best of all, it's free. To learn more, stop by your local library or visit their website. This message brought to you by the Greater Montana Foundation and the Montana State Library. Getting the building. So we're back yeah. with Bob Giordano of Free Cycles and Mist. Um, Congratulations, we were just saying that you had a capital campaign that was successful. Yes, it was a year-long campaign, cycles of change, and we didn't raise the whole amount ourselves outright, but we raised enough for a down payment, and some yeah. local investors stepped in and made it happen. Excellent. That's such an impressive thing. I mean, that the community came together the way it did, but then someone with, you know, the capacity to help in a short-term way or shortish or longer way yeah. uh, stepped up to the plate is amazing. So they've essentially given you a loan on good terms yes. to Yes, they want to remain money. anonymous, but they're, uh, they're a local, very community-minded person. And, you know, we're paying an interest rate, so they make a little money, but uh -huh. it's, it's very reasonable. We can afford the payments with our own rent and the other tenants that are there. It, one interesting thing is we have some vacant space, and we've had a lot of people say, oh, we want to rent space. That's a great neighborhood. It's a great place to be. So we're going to figure this out very soon. Oh, good. You know, what do we want to rent, or should we start new community projects? I heard mm -hmm. you in the last interview, Joel, say you know, being homeless shouldn't be criminal. You shouldn't oh, yeah, feel yeah, that way. Yeah. And, that's one of our goals, is to make a space that people can fix a bike, they can uh -huh. earn a bike, they can get a bike, they can help others and feel feel whole, feel a part of the community. Right, right. Yeah, I think that part is really important. The, yeah. psych the psychology, you know, of the, the classes coming together. You know, they say, well, I have something to give and that's cool, and people want to receive and that's cool, yeah. but there's not like the sense of uh, fear, enmity. There's and a lot of just interaction, like street. we're all interested in, let's say, bikes, yeah. you know, and so yeah. we could all be working together and it not being in every in all the separate bubbles. That well, we, we like to think the bike is just a great tool or medium is. to get people together. I mean, it could be toasters, I guess. I know, it's got to be, though. 
But bikes, Missoula's a good bike city. Yeah, yeah. Missoula, bikes make sense. That's what we're going to be giving away as MCAT, apparently. Okay. Like, you know, MCAT has our consultants, I'm not going to mention who. Yeah. And um, they said, well, you've got, you got to build up, you know, your MCAT following and support. You need to give away a bicycle. So <laughs> okay. that's what we're going to do. We're going to get, like, paid them, evidently, we're gonna, yeah. to say that. <laughs> we're going to get, like, a custom... Right. Cool bike of some sort. We should and, uh, we should consult with. Bob yeah, definitely first. need to consult <laughs> with you. Build you the ultimate Missoula. Yeah, right. right. And this will be a raffle, free raffle yeah. or something, um, for our 27th uh, birthday on April 22nd. That's yeah, coming up. Yeah, we'll make sure it has 27 gears. Oh, yeah, that God, must be it. I never could figure out why it would be Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, to get back to the building. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I I was really fascinated with the article I read, uh, was it about two weeks ago, three yeah, weeks ago? Yeah, just before Christmas. Yeah, um, about the space and plans eventually for this yeah. space. Can yeah. you tell people who don't maybe know where yes. the building is and yeah. what's available there now? Yeah, it's on South First Street uh, near McCormick Park. It's right. a two-acre site in the middle of the city. Two so acres. It's amazing. And it's on the trail system. Uh, it's a 28,000 square foot funky building with big wood beams. Um, it's amazing. We did not want to see this demolished and yeah. turned into condos. People need condos, but we have a lot of condos. And yeah. we in the sawmill just beyond you guys. Yeah, yeah, they're, right. they're, they're doing cool things. There. And the people in those condos need bikes too. Yeah, so, so, so we're there. Right. So, um, oh, um, Scott's showing a bit of the space, I guess. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, you all have done some good filming and pictures. Yeah, I remember the, the concerts we've recorded oh, down there? Been good, too. It's, a, it's very much a social space, a gathering space. Mm -hmm. And anyone can fix their bike for free. We'll teach. We'll help. They can volunteer four hours and build their own bike. They can make trailers. They can dream up anything. We had a third grader come in on Saturday when I was running the shop, and she's going to do a project and build a bike uh, and give it to someone who needs it. Oh. Uh, but the new programs, a community bike share, where like it's like a library, mm -hmm. um, free or affordable membership, a youth hostel is on our docket, and a fabrication uh, center. People need more than two wheels sometimes, whether it's for their balance or to carry things. So just right. you can think about the free cycle site is you know everything about bikes and sustainable transportation and community and healthy that's that's our motto it's like let's become a is a more healthy community yeah like, yeah, like place making but place around making. the idea uh, we're even gonna have an event on february 4th called celebration of people in place yeah. to oh, celebrate that's great. so everyone is welcome to come place making thank yeah. you yeah. well and it'll i mean yeah. it'll just be a great celebration yeah. too for yeah. for uh, this huge success yeah and it's just the beginning of something new you know chapters right. Open and close. And that whole area of town is going through such exciting, uh, but also dramatic and change, and being it thoughtful is. and having an, a wonderful community um, anchor. Yeah. There. Yeah, we host uh, neighborhood council meetings for the mm -hmm. riverfront, and on one hand, people love change and development, but there's also apprehension. I don't want yeah. my neighborhood to grow too high or every little space to fill in. Right. So we're very cognizant. We almost think of our relationship with the neighbors as the most important thing yeah. right there in the middle of the city. Yeah, it's a wonderful space. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And and clearly, yeah, not not another just bike shop. This is a no. community. Yeah, and we're always trying to redefine. Well, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, because it's always changing. Yeah. And that neighborhood, you know, the sawmill condos, mm -hmm. massive, massive amount of folks will be your neighbor, too. Yeah. And they're in walking distance. And the yeah. riverfront yeah. triangle mm -hmm. and the Missoula International oh, yeah. School. Right. Oh, my gosh, I forgot That's about right. that. And Orange That's Street. Right. We got to do something. And, of course, the new Street. library. Uh, yeah. yeah. I remember Orange when it was Tulane. Ah, oh, no. Good old <laughs> Well, that's great. Now it can wow. be a little dangerous. So that, that's uh -huh. the lead in our umbrella. I've been, I've, yes. we've talked about this before, Missoula Institute for Sustainable Transportation. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you, that's why I said you get it, that's yes, right. if you get a bike uh, and the city's unbikeable, what good is that bike? Right. So we're staunch advocates for a little more bike lanes, more trails, still allowing the cars to flow, but not dominate our city. And that's... Um, uh, a challenge that every city in the world is facing. Right oh, yeah. Right. Like Ooh. with the Russell Street expansion, yeah. you know, yeah. the bridge. Yeah. A lot there's of talk has been going for on everyone. for years. There it just is. takes thought. Yes. And, and recognizing that there's more than one priority. Yes. Yeah. The 5th and 6th Streets, you know, yeah, under right. discussion and now Front and Main. Yeah. I think something's going on on the 25th related to that, January 25th. 
related to oh the the one way street oh the one way streets right? downtown Pardon, Maine. yeah yeah the, uh, i was talking about that with someone today you know they've been <clears throat> slated to go to two way at some point when right. yeah that's right, right. right. Yeah. Right. A lot of changes in our little town. Yeah. Yes. Well, anything you want to add? I know Laura came in, we were told. so. Uh, no, we just appreciate all the support. Um, you know, we still have money to raise, or, but we don't yeah. have the pressure we had before. Right. <clears throat> and we take, we take all bikes and all things um, wheeled, basically. So if people have uh, old bikes in their garage, just bring them down. We're open 10 to 6, Tuesday through Saturday. And while I mentioned adults need to do their four hours of service to earn a bike that they fix with our help, yeah. kids 10 and under do not need to do that volunteering. We have so many kids' bikes and they have oh, grown. Wow. Yeah. So we're a good swap center. So oh, that's a that's good thing great. for parents to yes. know. Come and get yeah. one for your kid and then give it back yeah, when they've it grown when out of grow it. it and right. And get, we, get, we get the kids pumping those tires <laughs> up. <laughs> right. Washing yeah. their bike yeah. and adding the tassels and even putting the grips on. Yeah, yeah. That's kids, great. kids are, they have more. Uh, um, more gumption than we well, saw. Oh, yeah. I know I board. did. I made some really strange concept bikes when I was <laughs> a child. Oh, yeah, my God. I see the wheels turning. Yeah, yeah. All right. So well, free thanks. cycles still need your support, yeah. but uh, they've got um, they've got good Wonderful. news. A good oh, Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you know Bob. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. Laura Millen, the director of Missoula Art Museum. She is um, warming up in our bullpen, and she's going to come out and throw the bull. We'll be right Tell back. Tell us about that auction. Yeah. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Your local library, igniting the passion for reading. So you got yourself a library card, but how do you find what you're looking for? Well, not to worry, the old days of cards and codes have been replaced with an easy to use computer catalog. Simply search by title, author, or subject, and you'll get instant results telling you exactly where to locate your item. To learn more, stop by your local library or visit their website. This message brought to you by the Greater Montana Foundation and the Montana State Library. Uh, Laura <laughs> Millen is here from the Missoula <laughs> Art Museum. Welcome. Thank you so much. And I was just telling Laura she could look at the screen because I think, I don't know, did you just give it to Scott? He's like, he's nodding his head like it's going to work. There we oh, go. So feel free to narrate okay. about the 45th annual benefit auction coming up. Yes, which yeah. is coming up on February 4th at the UC Ballroom, but is currently on display at MAM in the second floor galleries. And um, so this just gives you kind of a sketchy view of the 80 art, 82 artworks wow. that will be auctioned on February 4th. Um, about half in the silent auction and half in the live. And it's kind of skewing a little red here. Right. Yeah, it does look that but, way. But um, it, it is, in fact, a really lively and diverse collection of work this year. Just so beautiful and uh, diverse in scale, expression, price point. Yeah, uh, price point. You've seen a lot of art come through. For yeah. How many years have you personally run the auction? I mean, uh, been the director? 26. 26 years, Whoa. oh my god. It's so so is there, do you feel like some years, in some strange way, uh, there's a thematic thread or anything that 
Yeah, um, really. I, I think that you know sometimes you see you you do see stylish stylistic shifts. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's more a matter of um, truthfully when artists give us really good work. You know, it, it comes down to that, and I do think artists are giving us such beautiful work. Yeah. Um, you know, we've worked with a lot of these artists in in various capacities and exhibits and in auctions in the past. They really appreciate MAM and what MAM does for the art community and for artists specifically, and they give us beautiful yeah. work. And well, I mean, you've built up amazing relationships with artists, That's right. not just in Missoula or Montana, but around the nation. It's true. And so. Artists are kind of the focus of what we do. <laughs> After all. You know, really. And um, we value that relationship most highly. Anything different about the format in this year's auction? I mean, I know, or maybe you could just give us a little sure. taste Sketch of, of what it'll look yeah. like. Well, it opened, doors open at 5, and um, for the first, um, oh, a couple of hours, we feature um, a cocktail hour with past hors d'oeuvres, and the focus is on the silent auction mm -hmm. at that point in time. Hope, hope that folks get thoroughly... Um, a, a good thorough look at the silent auction and start that bidding process. Attached um, to two or three pieces. <laughs> yes, hope they get hooked on um, yeah. something and start that bidding going. Um, this year for the, I guess, third year in a row now, we're offering in the silent auction a buy it now option. Which oh, is, yeah. Which is, you know, there's a, a slightly elevated price um, at the bottom of the bidder sheet that you can commit to um, right off the top and it's yours. Oh. Um, right. So that's so really, you and your friend across the room don't have to keep running right. back and forth. That's right. right. That and that has accelerated sales in this island I auction. Like that. I yeah, bet. and made it kind of a little bit more cutthroat competitive, <laughs> which we love. Yeah, yeah, that's a great uh -huh. idea. Well, it is the largest fundraising event for the Missoula Art Museum that it is. undertaken the year, right? It is. It is our biggest fundraiser and uh, very important to our operation. It raises money for yeah. us to keep on keeping on with those exhibits and yeah. offer them free right um, you know year long so it's super important but um, it's you know it's also a really fun celebration um, art of the art community of the museum and it's you know it's it's important role in the in our cultural life and so it's it's got and it's it's a pretty dressy affair, mm -hmm. so it's kind of fun. You know, the ballroom fills with probably about 450 people dressed to the nines and looking. That'll be Kim <laughs> and Neil, right? Yeah, no, not Neil. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got Just something me. in the closet. Just you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I haven't even thought about what I want to wear at this time. There's well, not a theme this year. You know, the theme, we decided just to focus on the art of, the, we're calling okay. it the art of the auction. Yeah. And our focus is really on the bidding process because, you That's know, it, it really is the fun thing about the about the event and, um, and something that I think we do extremely well, um, both in the organization of the silent auction, but then the live, mm -hmm. which is, called by a professional um, benefit auctioneer from Portland, a mm. woman. Uh, we've been working for the last several years with a company called Benefit Auctions 360 from Portland. And, um, and they're fantastic. Um, happen to be women. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's different. You know, it's auctioneers who do charity auctions for a living um, as opposed to, say, cattle. Right. Or which, cars. Which is what right. you might run into you in Montana often more often. Of yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a different, you know, it's... it's, it's so it's after, after the silent, uh, the cocktail hours uh, go on, there's a dinner, Then everybody's right? seated to dinner, and um, really shortly thereafter we start the program right. and, and begin the bidding on the, on the uh, live auction so that we don't keep everybody there till midnight. Right. right. I know some people would say, oh, I want my auction exciting and tidy you know, <laughs> rather than the, the drawn Truly. out. And yeah. we over the years, uh, actually since we've been working with Benefit Auctions 360, we've, we've um, narrowed the live. Mm. Um, it used to be as much as 75 pieces in the live auction. Yeah. Um, it just took too long. Yeah, some years. And didn't give a good, really a, a good fair profile of those artworks. So there will be about 40 um, pieces in the live auction. 
and we hope it will be done by around 9.30. That's okay, amazing. Then. So th are there still tickets available? Yeah, there are tickets available. We're filling, but there's still room. People can go, go online? Go to the MAM website. People? I think Scott's yes. shown, well, he's shown a lot of this. Right. You know, the, the general collection of work that will be in the auction. Okay. And we remind the viewers that they can go to the museum and see the items um, that will be in the auction. Through February 1st. Through right, almost right up view. to the auction on the 4th. Yeah. On the second floor. So pop it in person if you can. That, yeah, that way they can Then really you'll get them. a real experience of the art and you'll be able to fall in love with quite a few pieces and yeah. know what you're doing mm. when you get to the auction. It makes a difference. Yeah. Um, Raphael Chacon was going to do an art he of did, collecting. Didn't he? or Yes, last week. Oh, he, he did it last week. I was And explain to people so how, how they can build their collection right. of art and right. so on. You know, I think that's one of the most fun things about the auction is, you know, if people have a misconception that it's for a certain level of income or mm. a right. certain kind right. of person or a certain age right. or whatever right. it is right. but it's it's so exciting to to experience it at whatever level and there are yep. all the different levels yep. kind and of price do, points we're very careful to keep keep that range that i talked about both the price the points and the price point <laughs> mm -hmm. very important so that you know, we can, you know, the auction over the years has been going for 45 years. Yeah. yeah. The auction was, interestingly, it was started to um, raise funds to start the museum. Wow. So it's older than MAM. Yeah. MAM, you know, started, MAM's 40. Wow. Auctions 45. So 1972. And so for five years they held auctions annually. Wow. And split the proceeds with artists. And I think at that time artists really needed a venue, you know, mm -hmm. for, to sell their work. Yeah. And were very anxious to do so. Um, and they collected some some funds to get the museum off the ground. And uh, so it's been going a long time, and I think it, it has functioned for both the institution and for artists. Mm -hmm. And it is and it has really encouraged collecting yeah. in Missoula. It's educated a lot of yeah. people in the community mm -hmm. about and and once once you get that that's it. Yeah. And you know, people say, Oh, I'm not a collector. Well, you know, you look around your house. You we all collect some something. Collecting is going <laughs> on. An uh -huh. And collecting is going on. Yeah. Was yeah. there Rudy audio in the? I can't remember. I saw that either. Actually, so yes. So much information. Thanks I was like, for mentioning that. I wow. saw it somewhere, right? That there's a Rudy audio being offered. That was offered kind of late in the game. The wow. Audio family came forward with a um, original drawing from 1991. Oh. It's a beautiful colored drawing mm. uh, that Rudy did and um, offered it. So it's not in the catalog. It's right. what we call off catalog. It'll be kind of an extra added bonus oh, wow. in the live auction, yeah. which is going to be very exciting. So right. Scott said we had three minutes, like we a minute did. ago. But um, <laughs> Scott, can you show the website to people yes. so that if they are interested, they'll know where to go, what it will look like. And from this, I see a view cart, so there they can is. purchase the tickets right from the website. Exactly. Perfect. And the date again is February 4th. Friday, yeah. February 4th. Yep. At the UC Ballroom on campus. What can um, What did you choose to eat? Give people an idea. You know. Oh, I chose meat. All right. <laughs> so what we're doing wow. this year? <laughs> kind of a comfort. Is that palatable? <laughs> a comfort food option. Is um, that right? Now yeah. is, it's going to be um, polenta with short ribs, Ooh, no. ragu, oh. and the vegetarian option is polenta with um, a mushroom uh, ragu. Okay, so. sounds wonderful. And this Yummy. is catered by the UC. It is. Yeah. yeah and they've got a good reputation. And now. I'm really glad they you're back there. there. It's yeah, a nice We space. love the room. It's, it's a nice yeah. space. You know, it's a room big enough for the audi the size audience we need for the auction, and yet not too big, mm -hmm. so that it keeps everybody kind of within view of each other, yeah. certainly. And that is how the sport of the art, <laughs> right. and the art of bidding works. Oh, I see what you mean. Rather than being like church-like or pew-like. You want to look, you look around tables you want to see who's, see who's, who's got that bid, who right. right. won that bid. You yeah. know, that's so. the fun of it. Well, good luck. So, I'm yeah, I know it'll be another great year, and I'll Thank see you, you there. Thank you very much. Uh, you're most welcome. And, and thank you guys for uh, tuning in to this edition of Missoula Live. Um, as always, if you know of a group you'd like to see on Missoula Live, give us a call at MCAT. The number is 542-6228. For MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. And I'm Kim Anderson. And we'll see you next time.